the program on igneous rocks, you'll remember that we distinguished three main types of volcanic or extrusive igneous rocks. The first of these was basalt. The second was andesite, the andesite being less mafic in composition than the basalt, that is having fewer um, mafic minerals rich in iron and magnesium. And the, another slab of oceanic lithosphere and an island arc, such as the islands of Japan, is produced on the uppermost slab above the descending plate. And finally, in the fifth case, volcanic activity is also associated with the situation of oceanic lithosphere diving down beneath the margin of a continent, a continent formed, of course, of continental lithosphere. And this kind of situation is the kind that's found in the Andes on the western coast of South America. In this program, we shall examine those situations and the reason for the difference in the lava that's erupted at those various sites in a little more detail than in the program you've just seen. But first, let's look at the characteristics uh, in review of the main lava types. Basalt is usually very fluid and forms um, flat sheet-like areas such as the Columbia River Plateau. This is the eruption of basalt uh, through continental lithosphere to appear on the land surface. But not all basalt is quite as fluid as that. Some is rather blocky. We call this Aa lava. This is a Hawaiian word, and uh, the most fluid kind of lava also has a Hawaiian name, pahoihoi. This is a very fluid kind of basalt lava, and sometimes this kind of lava flows around trees when it flows over a land surface and leaves behind what we call tree casts. Now, the difference between the aha and pahoihoi lava the aha being blocky and the pahoihoi being fluid, is probably caused by differences, first of all, in temperature. The fluid lava is probably hotter than the blocky lava. And also, there's probably more gas still held in the fluid lava, which tends to make it um, <clears throat> run faster, as it were, than in the blocky lava, from which most of the gas has escaped. The main site, site where basalt lava is erupted is in the centers of the oceans. There, something in the order of 50 billion uh, cubic kilometers is, 50 billion tons, I'm sorry, is extruded annually. The site where uh, the less mafic lavas are erupted is the um, subduction zone site. There, the andesites and the rhyolites are erupted. And the andesites and rhyolites are thicker than the basalts. The rhyolites, for example, produce rather stubby cones, not at all like the, uh, the sheets that the basalt produced in the Columbia River Plateau. The reason for the difference between the fluidity of the basalt and the rhyolite lies not always in the temperature nor in the content of the gas, as it did between the aha and the pahoihoi lavas, which were just varieties of basalt lava, but probably lies in the content of silica. And you can imagine the difference being related to the number of oxygen silicon tetrahedra. You'll remember those, I hope, from the previous programs. The number of oxygen silicon tetrahedra that are in the liquid. The more oxygen silicon tetrahedra, then the thicker the liquid. Think of them um, sort of being sticky tetrahedra, if you like. Um, <clears throat> in the rhyolites, because there's more silicon and more oxygen, there are more tetrahedra, and they're thicker. In the basalts, there is less um, quartz, less feldspar. The iron-rich minerals um, <clears throat> have less silica in them, and there are fewer oxygen silicon tetrahedra. So that's probably the reason for the difference between the rhyolite and the, um, the basalt lavas, the differences in their viscosity. Now, since basalt lava is the lava which is erupted at mid-ocean ridges, it's the lava which generally, but not always, but generally forms the pillow lavas, the eruption of which uh, you just saw on the film in some quite unique and exciting footage.
You'll probably remember from the film the very fine exposures of pillow lava in the Northwest Territories. Originally poured out on the floor of a Precambrian ocean, these pillows have been cut through and you don't see the three-dimensional pillow-like form. What you see is a cross-section. Smoothed by glaciation, these originally rugged outcrops are now quite rounded. 2,000 miles away, Dr. Rowley Riddler of the Geological Survey of Canada describes similar pillow lavas on the um, shores of Hudson's Bay. This particular pillow lava flow is an andesite. This means that it's of more intermediate composition and has about 55% silica. Nevertheless, it shows the same characteristics as other pillow lava flows. In particular, it has the bulbous mass of lava encased within a darker material, which we call the selvage. The selvage is an original case which enclosed the lava. It's formed of a glassy material which is extremely fine-grained and contains a great deal of volatile material. And later on, when the rock lithifies, it forms a distinctly different color and texture from the interior of the pillow, nicely defining the structure for us and allowing us to interpret the upper curved surface as being the top and the lower surface as being the bottom. This is a piece of pillow lava like that described by Dr. Riddler. And here is the edge or the outside of a cross section of an individual pillow. That's the dark selvage that he mentioned. Here is the, uh, the rounded third dimension of the pillow, which you weren't able to see in the cross sections of the rock outcrop. Another structure which is quite dramatic in igneous rocks when one can find it, it's not all that common, was a structure that you saw in the film in the Giant's Causeway. These are the hexagonal six-sided columns which form a kind of pavement at the Giant's Causeway. This is produced by contraction of the cooling basalt uh, as it, the temperature drops after its eruption. The six-sided form is produced because contraction takes place towards centers. And the six-sided form is a very economical form for material to contract into when it cools. You also see the same kind of um, <coughs> form, same kind of six-sided structure produced when mud dries, for example, and, and contracts. It's a quite common form. The